Hey y'all, Emily Twerty here from Shirefolk Farm in Shenandoah Permaculture. Just gonna do a quick little video showing you how I'm starting my pawpaw seeds today. Um, just for reference, I learned to do this from this guy, Michael Judd. This is a great book called For the Love of Pawpaws. It has all these techniques. Um, what I'm doing today is probably not exactly what Judd recommends, but um, it is close enough and it's what's worked for me, so I'm just gonna share with you my process. If this is interesting to you, go ahead and pick up a copy of this book. It's really beautiful, um, got lots of great photos, super visual, really just a nice read. Um, just kind of fun, even if you're not like super, super into pawpaws. But um, what's great about this is it goes into different cultivars, uh, varieties, wild versus, um, select talks about how to choose a tree if you're gonna actually you know buy a pawpaw that's already started talks about planting harvesting tree care maintenance uh, mycorrhizal fungi in your soil sheet mulching goes into permaculture a little bit has some really great recipes so definitely recommend this if you're gonna get into pawpaws all right let's get started Right now it is mid-July. This is not really the time to start these. Ideally, you want to be starting, uh, and by, when I say starting, I mean germinating your seeds in like February indoors. But I didn't get around to it, um, and yeah, I didn't get around to it, so I'm doing it now. Better late than never. Um, I did this same thing last year, actually. I had my papa seeds uh, being stored in my fridge and forgot about them until roughly this same time and I have some beautiful pawpaw trees growing from them this year so hasn't been a big deal. Um, one thing I want to show you guys is before you start your seeds you want to get them really clean so these are nice and clean there's no gunk stuck to them if you're peeling fresh pawpaw seeds it's you know you're taking them out of the flesh you know kind of taking them out of the flesh like as though it's like a mango seed but then they have sort of their own little casing that you have to sort of peel off of each one. One boon to waiting till it's like been a really long time is that the flesh separates from the seed really easily. Here's the pile of really nasty looking moldy flesh. I mean this was gross. I wasn't sure what I was gonna find when I peeled up in these fruits. But they actually came clean uh, really nicely. So you can see here just some really nice clean seeds. I'll try to find one that's got a little bit of stuff clinging to it. See, you can see on the tip there, there's that little bit of gunk. This whole thing was covered in kind of an, in like a capsule of that. So you want to get all that stuff off as much as possible. That little tiny bit I'm not worried about, but you don't want to leave any of the flesh on the seeds. So, you know, it was all covered in this stuff. You don't want to leave any of that on the seed. So I'm going to show you guys how I germinate seeds. Let's go. One thing I want to show you guys is uh, the seeds on the left are from select varieties of pawpaws, which means they'll have a larger seed but fewer seeds and a higher flesh to seed ratio. So it means there will be more fruit, more edible fruit and less seed. The ones on the right are just from wild pawpaws. So the ones on the left um, I gathered up at the end of the season at, at Edible Landscaping in Afton, Virginia. Really great plant nursery if you ever get a chance to visit. And then these the ones on the right were wild harvested. So um, I will separate these in my germination containers. Just FYI, you want to keep those separately because the ones on the left are going to produce a more desirable fruit. Another thing I want to just show you guys is uh, what my wintertime storage looks like. So basically just Ziplocs with these seeds in them. These ones are looking a little bit dry, like they just don't look moist at all in there. Um, it probably would have been better to put a uh, paper towel, like a damp paper towel in there just to keep them moist. Pop-up seeds really don't ever want to dry out. Um, whereas these ones uh, were quite moist. Looks like there might have been a little flesh left on these. You can see right here. Um, all I'm going to do is rinse those off until they're nice and clean and they'll be just fine. But again, these ones I labeled just says Papa late August 2019. So these were just wild type, whereas these were the selects. So I do separate them when I'm 
saving the seed because I don't trust myself to remember. And uh, make sure you always label because you're not going to remember what you did last August when it's all of a sudden, hopefully February, but possibly July. Here's what that cleaning process is going to look like just to rinse those off. I have this little frame that has some half inch uh, hardware cloth in it stapled between the, between the layers. So it's just a little frame that has it screwed into the edges. Use these for screening potting soil or all kinds of things. But I'm just going to dump these out from around, give it a spray. Some of them are falling through. It doesn't happen with the bigger select varieties, but it does happen with these. I'm just going to rub them around. Here's some of that last year's flesh I was talking about that needs to come off. You can just scrape it off with a fingernail. Here's what that looks like when it's slightly fresher. Just going to make sure I get that all off. It's okay if they fall through, I'll pick them back out. I'm really using this screen for the friction. I'm not actually trying to like screen for size, so it doesn't matter if they go through because they're really just trying to get clean. I'll rinse them again, and I'll be good to go. All right, this is just an empty foil pan. It's not like turkey sized. I think it's, oh, what is it? Maybe like 10 by, I don't know, 12 by eight or something like that. Who knows? It's, um, but it's the kind of smaller standard size deep foil pan. It's about three inches deep. So I'm just gonna put a nice layer of moist peat moss down. I have some peat moss here that I have sprayed. This would work with coconut coir. It would probably work with a sterile potting soil too, but I'm gonna get maybe half an inch here. You don't want your mix to dry out, so if it's a little powdery like this, maybe spray a little more water into it, which I'm gonna do here in a second. All right, my mix is moistened now and patted down flat. Um, I probably have a little over half an inch, and what I'm gonna do is just take my seeds and just lay them out in a grid. Just space them nice and even. These are all select seeds. Those lighter ones are the ones from last year. The, the ones that I cleaned last year, that is. All right, so now that we've got one layer, we can cover those right up with another layer of peat moss. Again, nice and moist. You don't want it like dripping because you don't want anything to rot, but you want it um, really like, uh, what do they call it? The damp sponge test with your compost. You might want to be able to squeeze like a drop of liquid out of it, but no more. And then I have one layer, one more layer that I'm going to put down. It's not going to be the whole grid because it's not that many. Now I've got a nice full pan of pawpaw seeds ready to go. All right, so these are about ready to go now. You can see I've got them labeled select, wild. The wild one I've already tied up. This is what the select one looks like on the inside. I left a label on the inside too in case later on when I'm potting these up, I mix up the lids. Um, I just, you know, label, label, label. You, you, uh, 
you can't really overdo it honestly you'll thank yourself later so um, here you can see I've got select pawpaw seeds and right under this baggie I have four Shenandoah uh, pawpaw seeds so I'm just keeping those um, in order and I'm gonna close this up I'm gonna tie it up like I did that one and then it's gonna sit in my greenhouse for a couple weeks until it starts sprouting little root radicals and at that time I'll do a video about potting up all right here they are in the greenhouse and if you're doing this in the spring when it's cold and or if you don't have a greenhouse you're gonna to want to put those on some sort of heating mat to keep them warm they need to be pretty warm to germinate I don't remember the exact temperature but you can check that out in Michael Judd's book about pawpaws and here is a flat of pawpaws that I these are the ones that I started really late last season and so they ended up kind of living in my garage over the winter to make sure that they didn't um, get too chilly outside which ideally if you start them earlier you shouldn't have to baby them so much over the winter but I'm gonna end up doing it again this winter since I started so late but they look great they're doing just fine you can a lot of really nice root growth these are ready to get potted up into something larger or planted into the ground so there you have it you too can have tons of pawpaws for very little effort and very low cost